Special Neck and Tech video cast. And we're here with Darren Thomas in London at the Dell Storage Forum. This is a really great opportunity, first of all, to kind of get some insights about where Dell's going and uh, some of the, the roadmap you kind of painted the picture for us today. And one of the things I thought was kind of interesting, you talked about a cloud button on, on storage devices. It sounds like an easy button. It, what's, what's this business about a cloud button? Well, it, what we want to make it is as simple as an easy button. It, obviously, setting up clouds is very hard. You, you've got to do a lot of provisioning and a lot of scalability, and you've got to think through a lot of the infrastructure and all, and there's a lot of effort into that, and that's you know where kind of clouds are today. But if you think about it, you're a guy or a company out in the, uh, out in the, uh, the sphere, and you want to just connect to that, uh, that um, cloud, it should be fairly easy. You, you get an IP address. Uh, you hit a button and, and your device finds the IP address or you give it the IP address and, and then it's just a matter of answering questions. How much? Uh, how much capacity do you need? What kind of capacity is it? You know, what's the SLA you're looking so for? So we're talking about simple storage yeah. resources. If you've got to expand beyond your local physical resources, right. now you're extracting resources. And that, that could probably be any third party storage like an Amazon Web Services or... Yep. or could be. It could be anything. But uh, I mean, if you think about this from a compellent standpoint, as an example, we, we just bought compellent. So you look at it from their standpoint, you can literally make this, uh, this cloud uh, entity, once it's connected, you can make it tier six. And, and now you say, okay, what are the policies? Well, it's the same as going to tier five. It's at a certain time, the data moves from tier five to tier six. And you can now make that cloud tier six. And so the, it, the, the customer is trying to figure out, well, how am I gonna use this cloud? And we should make that as simple as possible. And so one of the things is we tier from tier one to tier five, how hard would it be to just say, okay, we understand what tier six would look like and we understand mm -hmm. what kind of transfer rates would be. So if you select, you know, give me a cloud, we're gonna ask you like one or two questions. Are you backing up to this cloud or are you using it as tier six? And you answer that question and boom, we do it. I think what's interesting too is that the storage systems now have more intelligence inside themselves where it's not like you have to have the user specify all the details about their data, right? I think, you right. know, the, the hope is if you're going to make it easy, they're not supposed to have to know about a lot of these things except there is an extra, an extra area to go to. And then the underlying infrastructure should be able to kind of communicate back and forth what those needs are. Right. If you think about Compellent, we don't sit and ask a customer exactly when do you want to go from tier one to tier two, when from tier two to tier three. If we did, we'd be creating a lot more complexity. Instead, what we do is we say, look, we can move it between these tiers, and the worst case, if the customer's use model goes up, we'll just move it back. And because we're so effective and efficient at doing that, it, it, it doesn't require you to ask a lot of questions or get a lot of complexity built in. We just do it automatically. It's like Phil said this morning. Uh, a lot of customers get asked the question, do you want a thin provision and how much and where? We don't mm -hmm. even ask the question. We thin provision. You right. know, it's a, it's, right. we, took the, we took all those buttons away. We just thin provision. Now, and, and so you, you, we make thin provisioning so safe, you'll always use it. So a lot of these other companies, they have thin provisioning usage models of like 10%. We're 100% right. because we built, the, we built the smarts into the system to take care of all the worries and concerns you'd have you don't have to worry about it. So we're just going to thin provision. You, you, it takes that kind of, of design, uh, purposeful uh, architecture, it takes that kind of effort to make these things so simple anybody can use them. How far are we away from doing this? It, I mean, I'm not going to hold you to, to, to timelines, obviously, but this is obviously on the, at some point in the future of the roadmap. Are we talking quarters, years? Yeah, there's nothing technologically complicated. We just need to, we just need to have a cloud that we trust. Uh, Dell is building clouds. Uh, we, we need to have a cloud we trust, and we need to have a, some, a couple of simple SLAs. We probably need to work through the business yeah, arrangements. So it, could this potentially be, uh, and again, uh, speculating a little bit here, would this be a Dell branded cloud we can do offering, any, we can or do would it be an cloud. open backend? Yeah. I mean, typical Dell, we would have a Dell branded cloud. We think our cloud would be better, but we, in our open model, we would let anybody, uh, we'd let you do it to anybody's clouds so if you have somebody else's cloud. We'd warn you probably about the SLA. You know, if you're putting the data up there, is it really backed up? Is it really protected? But, um, you know, we want to make these things as simple as possible. And uh, then, so in my comments on stage, I, I talked about we want to make it as simple as there's a cloud button. You hit that button, you tell it where the cloud is, and it knows exactly what to do. And it's very close to that. And, we're, we're, you know, we're probably, we're probably going to wait longer on clouds being uh, 
clear enough for us to uh, articulate more than it is us writing code to do it. The writing code to do it is pretty simple. Right. And, and I think you kind of hit on a couple of things, like you hit on trust and safety and stuff like that. It, do you see it more as a, a, a mental, not necessarily a, a block for end users, but do you see this as something where it's just going to take a, a quite a bit of time? Because if you look at it, storage arrays that customers buy and put on prem, they trust you to be the hardware vendor. They trust that it's five nines and it's it's safe hardware. Mm -hmm. um, is there just going to be this? Is it just going to take a while for people to kind of get used to the notion of? Now I'm kind of actually tiering things that I don't necessarily understand what's going out there. So I don't, I mean, you have to apply like risk usage models, right? Yeah. Towards that. Absolutely. Because you, you can't, you can uh, not assume that I can use it as tier six. Tier six would imply that it's still managed by my array controller. Sure. And an array controller needs to have access to that tier if it's ever going to move the data back versus I migrate or replicate off of the device sure. where I've actually moved the data. Uh, in both cases, I've moved the data, but in one case, I've moved the data and the array controller still thinks it owns it versus I've moved the data and the array controller's passed ownership to the cloud. But the customer needs to know that that cloud is going to be, uh, you know, resilient. It's going to, you know, have five nines. If that's what they need, it has to have the same five nines that we do. Most clouds don't have that level of, of, of security. So there's going to have to be some SLA, service level agreement, that, you know, if you're going to move to this cloud, what we'd like to do is work with cloud so they tell us in code what the SLA is so we can verify it's sufficient that we don't need to ask any more questions or do we need to warn the customer that you just moved it to a cloud that defines itself as a lower SLA. You know, how would you like to handle this? So uh, there's, there's some questions to be asked, but they're mostly business questions. They're not technical questions. Right. Well, and the businesses usually deal with risk in terms of the applications, right? And today, if you look at a storage array, most storage arrays aren't. I, they're relatively application aware now. Right. They're getting better with VMware and stuff like that. But a customer might say, oh, my, "My SAP, you know, infrastructure, none of that can get tiered out there." So, is this going to require further development where the business speaks in terms of applications and those kinds of things? Is the storage array going to have to become aware of that stuff to kind of get, get through these hurdles? I don't want to yeah. get too far into the de details or yeah. into the weeds, but absolutely, because we do have AppAware uh, technology and almost every one of our uh, applications, we have a. Uh, we have a VMware version, we have a Microsoft version, we have a Linux version. We kind of know what's going on. We, we can pass through the application aware not information. We can have the knowledge to know whether that data can ever be moved off or not. So, uh, and, and like I said, that's another business answer we need an answer to. So, I mean, I, I think the easy one is to say I'm going to, I was going to use the cloud for replication or for a disaster tolerance or something like that. It's a copy of something anyway. I'll move it off there, and you have an agreement with your uh, with your cloud vendor to be that to be sure. that uh, resilient. And you know maybe it's not five nines, but you know you're not it's not primary data. And you also have another copy somewhere else. Maybe you move some to the cloud, and then while it's at the cloud, you do a backup on tape, and you've got both. So it depends on how that cloud implements it. What we want to do is assuming the cloud has it has an SLA, a business level agreement that you're acceptable, uh, that you've accepted. Assuming you've got that then we want to just push a button and it happens. And that was the push button. Is It's not hard. I mean, once we know the business conditions have been met, we can move the data there fairly easily. And have you had customers talk to you about this and, and ask you to provide them a roadmap of, you know, a lot of the conversations I get into is it's very high level. They don't know what all this cloud business is about. They don't know where their value proposition is. Have you had, I'm sure you had many Dell customers ask you that same question. Where's the value proposition for the cloud around us? Is that where it's... A, this has led you to? Yeah, they, it, it, actually, uh, I'm, I'm a little ahead of the customers in this case because the customers are kind of a little leery about clouds. Mm -hmm. The large enterprise guys see them as you know very expensive to move all their backup data there and almost nothing else are they willing to. Uh, the mid-range guys may be looking for new features and capabilities like you know uh, business analytics or something like that that the cloud could do for them. So everybody sees the cloud a little bit differently. And I'm, what I'm trying to solve for is when the cloud is ready for real business use. When a cloud is ready, I, I, I want Compellent and Equal Logic, all of our product sets, to basically be cloud ready. So, so when we ship your product, you don't go to a programming guide to figure out how to make the data move to the cloud. Right. You literally go to a panel and click a button. You, you say this volume, go to cloud, or, or something like that. Sure. You check a box and you're done. And that's you know what what we're trying to do is make the automation that's coming. Uh, just part of the system, and that's what we mean when we say cloud. I, I'm not promoting clouds 
in this argument at all. I'm promoting that my storage device, if a cloud is valuable to you, my storage device will use that cloud like it was built for. It. Sure. That, that was the argument. Great. Well, I think that's about all the time we have. I really appreciate your time with us, Darren. Talk a little bit about Dell and the cloud and where the, you're taking storage with it. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. This has been a great event in London, by the way. This is phenomenal. Thanks. And hopefully uh, you guys are talking about coming back next year to Europe as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, this is our inaugural event, but I think we're, we're all in committed. We do these things annually in the U.S. We're going to continue to expand them in uh, the, our other regions as well. And, and EMEA is obviously an important part of the business for us. So, yes, we'll be here, we'll be here often. That's cool. great. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks. Thanks.